Welcome to day 13 of Western Civilization. Uh, today will be the last day of Unit 2, and it will be the culmination of the, um, the previous four days. We're going to look at the two super religious ideologies in the world, Christianity and Islam, and historically when they first kind of interact and come to a head. So, some notable locations today to keep in mind are Edessa, Antioch, and Jerusalem, and I'll talk about what these are here in just a moment. Some notable dates to kind of keep in mind as, as well is 1096 to 1099. This is the, these are the dates of the First Crusade. Alright, so when we talk about the Crusades, the term refers to a holy war. Uh, Latin crux meaning cross. So what we have in this time is that a lot of Christians fought against pagans in the Baltic and Muslims in the Mediterranean. And it's a more or less political movement to regain some lost territory that was lost through Islamic expansion. Now the purpose was to recapture Palestine and the holy city of Jerusalem. So in 1076 CE, Muslims captured Jerusalem. Uh, in Jerusalem, we've talked about previously in, in different lessons and classes, uh, it has specific importance for the three major monotheistic religions today, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Okay? So in 1095, uh, the Pope at the time, Pope Urban II, launched the Crusades. He was worried that the Muslims were threatening the eastern borders of Christendom. All right, and so essentially what he did is he gives a public speech, and in this speech, if we can whittle it down to his main thesis, he says, Deus volt, which means God's wills it. It is God's desire for Christians to go and recapture Jerusalem. And so as we can see, that this call by the Pope is received fairly well. So there's people, people from all over Europe at this time that are going to be moving here eastward through the Byzantine Empire, through Constantinople, through Asia Minor, Anatolia, and then down into these locations as well, with the ultimate prize being Jerusalem here, which they eventually do get for a short period of time. Now one of the things to keep in mind with the Crusade is uh, Pope Urban II calls anybody and everybody that claims to be a Christian. Um, now, sometimes it wasn't the most ethical manner in which they, they got people to fight on the side of Christianity in this point. Uh, people were released from prison. People were influenced by money. Okay, People were able to kind of pillage the villages they went through. So, in theory, it was more of a, a gesture of goodwill to regain Christian territory. Um, however, in all practice, it was very barbaric and very brutal. So we're going to talk about the First Crusade primarily today because it's the one that has the most success for Western civilization. Um, but there is a reading that will follow today's lecture, and I will ask you to read that. And it's going to discuss every subsequent crusade following the first one. So the first one is primarily comprised of French and Norman nobles. Um, like we talked about, it's a military expedition, expedition excuse me, to the Holy Land. So it starts in 1096. Uh, a year later, 97, 98, they capture Edessa and Antioch, and as we kind of look here, these will become the, what we call the Crusader states. Um, so we get into Edessa, Antioch, eventually we're going to get into Tripoli, and by 1099, Jerusalem is going to be captured for these Christian Crusaders. Now, a lot of the success that the Christians had was because they, uh, they were quick victories because the Muslim Turks were divided and in disarray. Okay? Um, so they really didn't know that this was going to happen, so it caught them by surprise. So because they were disorganized and not unified, um, it meant success for the Christian Crusaders. Uh, however, what's going to happen, you'll see here shortly, is once Muslims in the area, in addition, the Turks in the area, kind of put aside their differences and unite, uh, the Christian presence in that region doesn't stand a chance. But their victories at this time, like I said, do create the Crusader Kingdoms for a short period of time. And you can see we're looking at this region, the Holy Land, Palestine, the Levant, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's basically going to be in the eastern portion or eastern side of the Mediterranean. 
Now, following this, there were a lot of defenders that stayed in the East. Um, they were kind of military monks or warrior monks. Uh, among these include the Knights Templar, the Knights um, Hospitallars, the Teutonic Knights, and so on and so forth. Okay, and they each kind of had different, different things that they were in control of or in charge of. Um, so the Knights, some Knights were in charge of the hospitals. Um, the Templars were there to kind of protect pilgrim and trade routes, all right, and so on and so forth. Now, looking at this map, we can see that once the Muslims and the Turks settle their differences, they're able to kind of focus uh, on the Christian presence in the area. So the Crusader state of Edessa up here falls to the Turks in 1144, and the Crusader kingdom of Jerusalem is recaptured in eight, excuse me, uh, 1187 by Salah ad-Din. Now, this kind of goes back and forth for a while. Uh, the Christians try to regain this lost territory. So by the 1200s, I mean, Christian for forces have launched about five major crusades. And there's a lot of other multiple minor crusades that happen. Ultimately, none are victorious. And I'll show you a picture here. This map kind of chronicles the, the route that a lot of these crusaders took. As you can see, the first kind of snake around Europe and eventually are united in Constantinople just before it actually and then march on the Holy Land. One thing that's of interest that I want to draw your attention to that sometimes the the ethical nature of the Crusaders was called into question for example the fourth crusade for example they leave and instead of going to the Holy Land they actually go up into Constantinople and they, they pillage Constantinople um, at this time. I mean this would have been you know, a few centuries before it eventually falls to the Turks, a lot of their power and influence is waning at that time as well. But what I would recommend at this time, it's a short lecture today. Um, please open the document that's contained on the website and read about the following and the subsequent crusades that are led. There's some pretty interesting crusades, um, one of which, for example, is the Children's Crusade, where you get a bunch of children that want to kind of go and recapture the Holy Land. Uh, they don't stand a chance. A lot of them are sold into slavery and stuff like that. So it's a very interesting part in our uh, the history of our world. And you can see that a lot of this tension between these two religious spheres still exists today between Christianity and Islam to a degree. And that concludes our discussion on lectures of Unit 2, the spread of religious ideology. And that will prepare us for our next examination into the area of world history.